The ICT free PDA rule is one of the rules ICT talks about a lot on its channel, so that's what I'm going to cover about in this video. First, I'm going to explain what the ICT free PDA rule really is. So here we see that we have three PDA rays. The first one being the value gap, where we're going to base our trade entry on. The second one being this inversion value gap. And the third one being the order block. So the ICT free PDA rate rule is where we're going to put our stop loss above free PDA rates, as when price disrespects free PDA rates, it usually signals that we're trading on the wrong side of the market. So if price were to disrespect all of these free PDA rates, then price is most likely going to go higher and take out this high up here. In simple terms, we use the ICT free PDA rate rule to know where to place our stop loss. And the reason we want to use the ICT free PDA rate rule is because when price stops us out, and disrespects the free PDA race, we know we're trading on the wrong side of the market. And if we don't know we're trading on the wrong side of the market and price stops us out, you could easily just reverse. Now let's talk some more about this example. So our trade entry is based on this Fair Valley Gap. Then we're going to put our stop loss above this high, as we have the Fair Valley Gap, that's one PDA ray, also this order block, that's another PDA ray, and a third PDA ray, which is this inversion value gap. We also have the volume imbalance between here, so actually four Peter rays. Then we're going to put our stop loss above the high, as that's the high of the order block. And we see price disrespects the volume imbalance, the value gap, and the inversion value gap. But it does not disrespect the order block. So the bearish price is still valid. And what does price do? It does not disrespect all the three Peter rays, so in that case it reverses, sweeping the sell side liquidity. This example showed us that if price disrespects two Peter rays, and there's still one Peter ray holding price, then price could still reverse. So that's why we also want to put our stop loss above three Peter rays. Next up, we're going to talk about how we can save great losses from putting our stop loss beneath three Peter rays. So for this example, we enter based on this volume imbalance and put our stop loss beneath three Peter rays. As we see, we have the volume imbalance. Then the further gap, then this further gap, and then we also have actually a volume balance down here. So this is four PD rays, but we only just need three PD rays. Then we see price stops us out. And instead of putting our stop loss below this low, we could save great losses from putting our stop loss below three PD rays. As we know, when price disrespects three PD rays, price is going to move lower. So in that case, as we saw the price disrespected all these PDA rays, then we can anticipate price also reaching down for this low. And price did reach down for this low. So that's how the free PDA rays also can save us from taking great losses that we actually didn't need to take. Next up, we're going to talk about how we can benefit from the free PDA ray rule when we're taking trade entries. So for this example, we see that price made a retracement down into this Fabelli gap and then started to expand higher. And that means we now want to look for free PDA rays to the downside getting disrespected. And right here, we have two Favelli gaps and also a volume imbalance. So in that case, the bias is now bullish. Then we see price makes a retracement down into this Favelli gap. And in the meantime, also makes an inversion Favelli gap. Then we're going to take a trade entry based on this inversion Favelli gap getting closed above, which is right around here and then put our stop loss below free PDA rays. That could be this inversion value gap, this value gap, and also this volume balance. And we also has a second value gap within here. So in that case, we're going to put our stop loss below all these free PDA rays, and then target to R. And we see the price takes out the two risk squad ratio. So basically right here, we saw that we could use the free PDA rate rule as both confirmation and also as a stop loss placement. And the reason we could use it as a confirmation is because when price disrespect this free PDA race, which as we talked about before, then we're trading on the wrong side of the market. Then we know when price disrespect free PDA race to the downside, then price is most likely going to go up to the upside. And then of course, when we check our trade entry, we're going to put our stop loss beneath free PDA race, as then we should could that if price stops us out, we're trading on the wrong side of the market. Next up, we're going to talk about how we can use the free PDA rule as bias. 
So right here, we see the price create a inversion folding gap, which then after a while got disrespected. And also price disrespected this folding gap. And lastly, these three consecutive up close candles, which is a order block. In that case, that means price is willing to move higher, as we now know the price disrespected free PD raise to the downside. And that means the bias is probably going to be bullish now. So let's drop down into a lower time frame and see if we could take a trade entry based on the bias being bullish and also using the free PDRA rule. Down here on the lower time frame, we can see that this actually pairs with the last example I showed you guys. And we also see from 10 a.m. right here to the close. Going up, we see price makes a retracement down into this valley gap. This is actually the ICT silver bullet. So price delivers from the ICT silver bullet, disrespected the free PD race as we talked about before, then moves higher, then made our trade entry, put our dollars below the PD race, and then target the higher prices. Now going into a last and final example, we see the price disrespected free PD race. The first one being this fair valley gap, this large one. Then second being this tiny volume imbalance within here. And then also this order block. So that should indicate the price is willing to move lower and taking out this low down here. So now let's drop down into a lower time frame and take a trade entry based on the free Peter Ray rule. Here for this example, we see on the hourly time frame the price have disrespected a lot of Peter Rays. As we see, price have at least disrespected free Peter Rays to the upside. So that means price is now most likely going to be willing to move lower. And here for the New York AM open, we see that price actually also made a close below this valley gap, creating an inversion valley gap. So in that case, we can drop down into the lower time frame and look for a trade entry. Down here on the lower time frame, which is the one minute time frame. We can see the price is very close to this hourly intermediate term low. And we have seen the price is disrespecting free Peter race, and that means the bias is lower. So price is probably going to target a intermediate term low. And that means we can start looking for a bearish trade entry and this being a drawn liquidity. And what do we have right here? We have a fairly gap. We could check a trade entry based on this value gap and then put our stop loss at this high up here or above this PD ray, this volume bounce, and also this value gap. So actually, we could, could just put our stop loss above this high. And then where we're going to target the sell side liquidity, which will make a decent 1.8 risk reward ratio. So let's see if price can manage to take out this low. And we see the price within three minutes ran this low, 